Hello, I'm William from Detroit Record, and today we're gonna show you how to swap out your internet cylinder. I got my tools all laid out right here. Everything you'll need, a brass hammer, screwdriver, snap ring pliers, punch pliers, the 732nd, 78 stubby, and a three quarter. I also got the three quarter Allen on the half inch impact to take out the main pivot pin for the crossbar. First, what you're gonna wanna do is Take out your bolt and your pins. Take your punch. Now we got the pins out. We can go ahead and set the crossbar on the ground. Take your remote, go down. Suck it in. All right, next step, you're gonna take out the front stinger pin. Take off the snap ring that holds it in, and then set that to the side. Take your punch. Always try to use a brass hammer and brass punch on all the pins. That way you don't muscle them, them damage them. Now that I got the stinger pin out, we're gonna take out the stop plate. And to do that, you gotta take out the four bolts on each side that hold the plates in. They're held in with a 3 8 Allen. Uh, you use a 7 30 seconds to loosen them. I like to do the stop plate bolts by hand with a ratchet like this. Just take them out, both sides. Now the plates are still in the tube, so you don't have to worry about trying to pull those out by hand because what you're gonna do is just take you a, a rag so it's not all greasy for you on your hand. Just pull. And the plates will come out with it. All right, so now we're gonna work on the back stinger pin and take off the lines that go into the back of the cylinder for the in and out function. First things first, I can come to this side to take the snap ring out. Once I take this snap ring out, I'm gonna go to the other side and then we can do the rest from there. Okay. So we'll set that there so we can put it back in later. Now I'm gonna go to the other side so we can go underneath and take everything off. So before you go under there, you wanna make sure you got everything you'll need to take the lines off and knock the pin out. Flashlight for starters, seven eighths, and then you'll need your brass hammer and your brass punch to knock the pin out. So let's get under there and get to work. Next step, what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the in and out lines that go from the check block to the back of the cylinder. It's these two right here. Best way to do that is with a seven eighths stubby. All right, got the first line off. Now I got that out the way, I can get my wrench on this one. Alrighty, now that that's out, we're gonna work on the pin. There's a, a cotter pin that goes through the center of our stinger pin back here. Alrighty, now the pin's out from the cylinder. Now that you got the lines, and the stinger, rear stinger pin out. You can go ahead and just pull it from the front. You might have to twist it because the fittings on the back of the block, but it'll come straight out. All right, now that we got the old cylinder out, we got the fittings off of it. These fittings are still uh, new, so we're gonna just go ahead and reuse them. If they were old, I'd, I'd probably change them out, but they're new, so. We're gonna just go ahead and reinstall those on the new cylinder. You wanna try and have them cocked towards this way. It, it helps keep our lines from rubbing. Those are all nice and tight. And then after you uh, get the fittings tight and clocked to the proper way, you wanna make sure that the block is on the left in the back and then this is on the 
right side. This is right because it's on the inside, the barrel, it has clearance. This would be wrong because it's outside the barrel and it would hit. And it wouldn't allow it to go in all the way. No. Turn it. And now we're gonna go underneath. We're gonna reattach the in and out lines and the rear stinger cylinder. First, I'm gonna get the stinger pin in. All right, now that we got the pin in, we can put the snap ring on on this side. We're gonna put the cotter pin right back through the hole. We got the pin all the way in, now you just bend it. All right, now we install the lines. So the top line right here with the blue mark, that one goes into, into the back. Put this front one in first. Put this back one on. You gotta do the reach around move. Alrighty, all done back here. All right, now that we got the uh, cylinder in, we got the back all hooked up, we're just gonna use the pump to run it out. And we also need to pull the, uh, the outer tube out a little bit. So once you get your tube out, pull it out a little bit, you know, like this. Get the cylinder about right there. The long side goes towards the driver. That's very important that you make sure that is clocked like that. Put your inner tube in, pick the bottom of the cylinder up, and slide it in. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna put the stop plates back in. You wanna make sure you put them in the right way. The best way to do that is to take your plate and match it up with the outside holes because the plate, the holes will only line up one way. You just slide it in. Now, if you were wondering what my special cardboard tool was for, this is it. You push that plate back to the holes line up. So once you get the holes lined up, just take your screwdriver and guide it. And just install one screw at a time. Pick up a little bit so it lines up. Now if this side's tight, we go to the other side. Now we're gonna run the cylinder out and put the stinger cylinder back in. First, we're gonna take this one out, install the snap ring on this side because it comes in from this side. Got the snap ring in the groove. Now what we're gonna do is take the remote. We're gonna make the cylinder come out. See, um, can you see in the hole? Yep. All right, I'm about to make it go back in. So all you're doing is lining it up. And the reason why I didn't fully extend the tube is because trying to get this lined up if it was already extended would be a huge pain in the butt. So take your pry bar, put it in there until it's even. And just like that. And once it's even, just take your pin. Now, you just gotta put a snap ring back in there. Push it in the groove. Make sure it's all in there, and then boom. We're on to the final step, putting the crossbar back on. 
go down, go out, and you want to hit it against the first plate because that one's shorter. Then once you hit that, you just go down all the way to the bottom plate and then hit out some more. And it goes in and you pick it up and then you adjust it to where you need it to be. So, see how you, you do have to custom these though, right? And you're done. Wipe put off as needed. After you take it apart, you lose grease, so you always re-grease it. And then that's how you successfully change your in and out cylinder. <laughs>